for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Gorgeous Gourds. I'm Katie, and as usual, I am joined by Beth and Elizabeth to tell us about their recipes. So Elizabeth, tell us what you made. Sure, thank you. Um, so in past winters, I have cooked a lot with different squashes, um, but I haven't been doing that as much this fall and winter, I think because it can be sort of time consuming, especially if you bake them. And I've been trying to cut down on the amount of time that it takes me to make dinner. Um, so I haven't been cooking with squash gourds very much, but um, I have this cookbook checked out right now, How to Cook Everything Fast uh, by Mark Bittman. And I was like, well, let's see if there's a squash recipe in here that I can try out and indeed there was only one but uh there was one and this is for squash gratin with toasted hazelnuts mm. um so everything in this book is supposed to be 30 minutes or less of time total um and so this was really easy um you get a large butternut or other winter squash I used butternut um, you preheat the oven to 450 degrees, you um, cut the squash in half, trim it, peel it, and then you're supposed to shred it in a food processor with a grating disc, or you can use a box grater and you want six cups. I actually ended up using a box grater because that's what I had. It was fine. Um, and then you have some sprigs of fresh sage. So you'd strip the leaves and chop that and then put the squash in a nine by 13 baking dish add the sage, kind of sprinkle it around on top, um, two tablespoons of olive oil and a little bit of salt and pepper, um, toss it all to coat it together, and then pour a cup of cream over the top. Then you cover the baking dish with foil, bake it for about 10 to 15 minutes is all it took for the squash to be tender, and the cream is supposed to be kind of bubbling. And then um, when it's done, you're supposed to uncover the dish, sprinkle Parmesan over the top, and then these shelled chopped hazelnuts I couldn't find them um so I actually used pistachios because I thought that sounded good and I like them um and so then you put it back in the oven just for like five minutes until the parmesan is a little bit browned um so super easy um this recipe was fine I would say like it would make an absolutely fine dish for a Thanksgiving side it was easy you know there is the squash in it so it's kind of nice to get that you know if you like squash it tastes like squash it's a kind of a nice alternative to like a different creamy gratin dish um I hadn't had squash gratin before hopefully I'm saying that right mm -hmm. um you know they mentioned like I like they offer variations in this cookbook so they were saying you could do it with turnips or you could um add toasted breadcrumbs on the top so both of those things seemed good um, I would make this again. I'm not going to go to the trouble to grate squash for like an average weeknight dinner, but I think this would be like a good potluck dish that probably like no one else would have brought. Um, and yeah, it was good. It was good. I liked the, especially the cheese, like the Parmesan getting crunchy on the top with the pistachios. That was good. So, um, you know, I would recommend it not as highly as I've recommended other recipes, but it was totally fine. And if you're interested in squash, you know, this is an easy way to, to prepare it. So that was my gourds. Yeah. I never heard of grating it slow. You grate it. That's, and then you, it, that's why it comes yeah. so easily because it's right. Right. Uh, or quickly. Wow. So, yeah. Um, I love that you, um, you substituted the hazelnuts with pistachios just because I'm not a fan of hazelnuts. So like whenever I see them in a recipe, I'm like, oh, wah, wah. But then like, yeah, pistachios, that flavor profile seems like most of the things that um, call for hazelnuts would go with because, you know, it takes on that sweetness right. as well. So yeah, I thought that was genius and um, good on you for trying to find a recipe that cooks squash quickly. That's a cool cookbook 
there. I like that one. Yeah. I was going to say, I do recommend the cookbook though. I've cooked several things out of it. And um, sometimes I feel like, like cookbooks are like, it's fast. It's still not as fast. Like, and I feel like this really does adhere to the 30 minutes or less pretty cool. darn well. So I've been enjoying it. Um, Beth, tell us about your gorgeous gourd. Okay. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that when I looked up gourds, um, I found out that a watermelon is a gourd. I did not use a watermelon for this <laughs> gourd recipe though, but um, I used, I was, this is kind of a go-to with spaghetti squash. I use a spaghetti squash. I made a spaghetti squash casserole. I kind of riffed on a spaghetti pie recipe that I have used where you take the spaghetti noodles and you mix it with some cottage cheese and an egg and sort of make that as a crust. Okay, well, that's not, it's kind of what I did, but in cooked the uh, spaghetti squash whole, which isn't typically how I make it, but um, I did this time, poked some holes in it, baked it for, I think it was like 45 minutes or so. Um, and then when you open it up, it's like nice and spaghetti-like. And then that's when I let it cool a bit, added a, a beaten egg, um, salt, parmesan, um, laid that down as in a eight by 10 baking dish. Maybe it was, yeah, I think it was that big. Um, it's been a few weeks. And and then I had made a meat sauce that I just, my typical, you know, my go-to, which I probably did use a jar um, and tomatoes and, and beef and <clears throat> um, layered that on it. And I put fresh mozzarella on it too and I really really like how that works out because it's it seems like it's just like mozzarella plus it's already comes cut up some of them you know the circles so baked that and um dug into it and then I took a picture which I'll show you um but uh yeah it's um tastes good for leftovers and everybody liked it That sounds good. Did it, does it get crispy on the edges in the pan? Um, yeah, a little bit. Yes, but not as probably more cheese would make it, um, okay. crisp up a little, not, not as crispy as like a lasagna, but, okay. um, um, but I, I suppose I, if I let it cook longer, I would have, but yeah, it can't even tell. And it just really yeah. can't tell that it's spaghetti squash. And I did bring it over to the, and fed the other young people in my life and nice yeah that sounds like it's good time. yeah I don't know if that's something you guys make ever or with mm. spaghetti squash my mom used to make something similar like that that was like uh one of the only ways that I would eat squash as a child so it sounds familiar to me except for um the fresh mozzarella it I was not expecting that was a little bit of curveball for me so that sounds really really interesting I like that very yeah, that sounded great on the top. Yum. Yeah. All right. Well, Katie, what kind of gourd did you use this time? Okay. Well, this, this was actually a little bit of a challenge for me because like you said, I didn't really like squash as a kid that hung out with me for like a long time. So I have not ever been like a really big fan of squash, even though that kind of makes me sad because I do think they're gorgeous and I don't like not liking like any kind of vegetable, you know, I think they're they're wonderful in concept, but a lot of times I just don't like squash. So Beth did tell me about the watermelon thing. It was very tempting, but I did not choose a watermelon for my gourd either. Um, I decided to look for a recipe that was going to be pretty heavy on time because I had a really excellent time crop this year. I had tons uh, left over through the fall and even winter. And I know that's a complimentary um, herb to some of the fall and winter squashes. So I was like, let me find something with thyme. Been really loving it. So I found this um, recipe from the website for the love of cooking. And it's for honey roasted acorn squash with thyme. And uh, so what you do is you take your acorn squash and you just slice it in half and scoop out your seeds. And then this recipe calls for two tablespoons of softened butter that you spread all over um, the insides of your squash. I happen to have some thyme butter that I had made with my abundance of thyme. So I use that and I'll include the little recipe that I have for that, but it's basically just unsalted butter, thyme and salt. Um, so I put that over top of it 
And then I uh, do sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. And then you drizzle two tablespoons of honey over top and sprinkle it with some fresh thyme leaves. And um, you can see the picture that I took before I put it in the oven. I definitely used more than two tablespoons of the butter that was called for. I kind of like laid it on real thick. I was hoping that that would um, improve the taste of it. And um, I think it did. But so you just bake it for uh, 40 to 45 minutes. So it takes a while in a 450 like high heat um, oven. And uh, when it comes out, it's all like nice and browned on top. And it just looks really lovely. I've got another picture of like once it's come out and it's just fork tender and you just eat it right out of the skin, which I thought was cool. I liked it. It tasted like butter and honey and uh, it was really delicious. I could definitely see um, like making this as a Thanksgiving side, like cutting it into slices or quarters or something like that as a little side. But it was also just really good for like a nice warm lunch too. So I thought it was a really nice, simple recipe. That sounds good. And I'm sorry, I missed it. Was there more time added at before you cooked or after? Before I cooked. So you just okay. pull it on like right before it goes in the oven. Okay. And okay. it's just to taste. So it's like however much or little you, you want. want. Okay. Yep. What that kind of squash was it? Acorn squash. Okay. So that's what I thought. Yes. That's so how, little. that's typically how we make acorn squash uh -huh. um, with brown sugar. Butter. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's kind so of the like honey instead of that more typical, I think, brown sugar. Do you usually use honey? No, it's a, okay. yeah, but I'm sure. I mean, a this little is riff years. on that. Also, bacon. Mm. Mm hmm If you want. I, I would not have thought of that, but bacon goes good with just about anything, in my opinion, so mm -hmm. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, sounds good, and we all did different s squashes. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Very cool. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for watching Recipe Share. And be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be having a chili cook-off. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.